What's up guys and welcome back to another initial focus video. This is more of a gear update type of video and that's why it doesn't maybe look as clean or uh, kind of set up as some of my other videos so you can see the lights and everything. But anyway, this is what I've been using for the past couple of years. Not this camera necessarily specifically, this is my secondary old Nikon D3200. I'm using my Nikon D800 to record right now. Uh, but this is my main uh, lens of choice, which is the Tamron 70-200 f2.8. And I've got a handful of other lenses as well. But moving on past that, the gear kind of goes downhill from there. I've been using this lovely old tripod for a good number of years. This is completely plastic. You can probably hear it creak. It's just terrible. It's fine for photos because photos, you set it up, you angle it the way you want, you lock it in take the picture it's fine um, so it served me well but getting more into cinematography and filmmaking and these you know more cinematic type tech videos I wanted something a little bit more precise this cannot carry a huge load so I didn't want to go out buy a really nice camera and kind of a whole cinematic kit just to have it resting on top of this as I do pans and tilts it's impossible to track things smoothly um, it just is impossible to do any of that stuff so out with the old as it wraps around my mic cable whoops and in with the new here so let's pan on over to my new setup here so this is in fact my brand new camera setup Ooh, ah uh, i know it's pretty as you can see i very much like black and red that is one of my favorite color schemes um and you'll find that all throughout this kit minus this part but i'll explain that in a second starting off with the tripod this is a manfrotto tripod very happy to be in the manfrotto club not sure exactly what the model number of the legs are i'll link that in the description below but this is indeed the manfrotto 502 head and what i really like about this is how flexible it actually is the panning and tilting actions all have these kind of dampening or resistance settings to where right now it's very loose. It's very um, easy to pan uh, around and I can do the same with tilt, but I'm not going to with just one hand. But if I turn this knob here more towards the plus side, I can actually feel it getting tighter. And now when I tilt, you know, if I want to go fast, it really has a lot of resistance to it. So it's meant to be able to kind of have those very nice, smooth, cinematic feels of uh, panning. And again, the same goes with tilting. And of course, the actual legs themselves can spread out much further than this. Um, it can go a lot taller. There's just a lot more flexibility. Um, and I feel a lot more comfortable having a rig like this uh, sitting on top of the tripod. So... I'm really so far in love with the Manfrotto tripod. Moving up, we have the actual camera itself. This is the Blackmagic uh, production camera. This is a 4K, and that is the big difference between the couple year old Blackmagic, Blackmagic cinema camera, 2.5K recording ability, and this is the production camera with 4K. Um, so as you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little 4K symbol. In the bottom corner probably can't see it it's fine there'll be a lot more videos with this but anyway uh the main reason i went with this camera over some others i was looking at things like the panasonic gh4 the canon c100 uh definitely let me know down in the comments below if you thought i made a good choice i think i made a good choice i love it so far i've only had it for about two days um but I'll definitely put it through its paces. The main reason I ended up going with something like this is it very much fits that style of an original an original red epic, um, kind of that boxy style where the reds and the arias are all kind of in. Not comparing it to the latest red and aria Alexa cameras because those are tens of thousands, but this is definitely a very good intro cinema camera. Um, and attached to this, I had to pick up, of course, some new lenses. My other cameras are Nikon cameras, and of course, Nikon is not known for cinema. So, had to pick up some Canon EF mounted um, lenses. So, I picked up two lenses. Um, if you can see it here, this is the Rokinon, or Rokinon, however you pronounce it. This is the 35mm T5. Uh, lens and I also have a 85 millimeter totally forget what the t-stop is 
on that, but it is their 85 millimeter prime cine lens. Um, so what that means is if I actually drop down this uh, follow focus here, you'll actually see the different rivets in between. They are built into the actual lens. So this follow focus, which I'll get to in a second, um, I didn't need the adapter for the lens since it came built in. Um, I'll go more in depth to it in another video, but one, one of the main reasons to go with the actual um, cine lens over a DSLR camera lens is you have a lot more range of focus um, or a lot more range of motion to get your focus down. Um, and you can definitely see that in a lot of other videos. And then as far as extras attachments here, these two, the follow focus and the map box are all from a company called Camera R, Camera R, something like that. Um, again, I'll link all this stuff in the description down below. Um, it's all sitting on top of a newer 15 millimeter rod. Um, and newer, I did see uh, make a follow focus and a map box for a hell of a lot cheaper. However, they looked very cheap. Um, you always get what you pay for, right? So I didn't want to go all the way to the top of expense, but I also didn't want to go all the way to the bottom. And I must say I was a little biased because this fit the black and red color scheme that the rest of the set is in. So that may or may not have contributed to my decision. Um, but as far as this follow focus goes, it is very solid. Um, the white part here is dry erase, so I can make marks if I want to get that follow down perfect, uh, focus down perfectly. Um, pretty much everything is metal on it. This is metal. The attachments are metal. All the gears are metal. Um, and there is no wiggle at all. This thing is rock solid, has the little square hole there so you can put, um, the focus arms or whatever they're called into there to get your focus down perfectly. Moving on to the matte box here. This is a very nice matte box. Again, it's mostly metal. Um, this interior part here is a high quality plastic, but all of the um, barn doors and shields and everything are all metal. Um, the rods are metal. Everything else is metal. It's really good. Um, main reason I love this one is the barn doors do come fully off you can actually loosen these slide it down to make it more compact get your angles down and even right in the middle of here you can take this part out of the top swing around here right up top here comes out and it is uh, for filters so you can put square uh, I think it's four inch by four inch filters could be wrong on that but you can fit uh, standard size filters in there um, and again it matches the lovely black and red so I'm a little biased to that. And then lastly here, we have my Atomos Ninja 2 uh, field recorder. Now, this does not record 4K, um, so obviously it's not meant for that. This is going to be primarily for whoever is doing follow focus um, or focusing or maybe recording for a client. I'll have a long HDMI cord uh, going out so they can see it. Now, obviously, it's not hooked up yet, and that is because the Blackmagic camera does not have any form of direct HDMI out, so I have to order a SDI to HDMI adapter. So that shouldn't be too much, but just not in yet. Um, but I will have two screens set up there. Um, but yeah, so let me know down in the comments below. I just really quickly want to show you guys the new setup. Uh, this will be one of the last couple 1080p HD uh, videos, so I'm super excited to get 4K out there. Um, I will be making a video all about my concerns with a 4K workflow. Um, I've noticed just in the past day that recording 4K is a whole new world. People are not joking when all they say is you'll be buying hard drives out the wazoo after you get a 4K camera. This is a 240 gig SSD inside of here and it gives me 12 minutes of record time, uh, which is crazy. So yeah, I'll definitely go into that. If you want to see individual in-depth reviews on any of this stuff, the lenses, the follow focus, the map box, Atomos, um, and I'll definitely probably make one for the camera itself. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, again, thanks so much for all your support, guys. Definitely hit that subscribe button and like button if you like what you saw. Let me know some criticism down in the below. Prefer constructive criticism, but hey, it's YouTube. Say whatever you want. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a fantastic rest of your day.